Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here at Larry's Orchids. Today we're going to be covering a growing guide on Stanhopia orchids. And I am so excited to bring to you all this very unique orchid that a lot of people completely overlook. And it's a very unique orchid in a couple ways and I'm going to show you how to grow it in this episode. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what makes it so unique. And this orchid, uh, more so than any others, is going to have a very unique blooming pattern. It comes out the bottom. And so the first part of this growing guide, repot in a Vanda basket or a flat mount. We like Vanda baskets, but you can also mount them as well, but just make sure that they have an open bottom. Reason being is because here at Larry's Orchids, we sell them in a pot. The reason why we sell them in a pot is because we're not expecting them to bloom in store here. So if they do flower, we're never going to know and they kind of just coil around and they just end up dying and no one ever sees them because they can't come out of the pot. So basically when you receive them, no matter if it's a blooming size or a seedling, we do sell both. So check the description so you know which one you're getting. Either way, when you receive them, make sure you repot them in a Vanda basket right away. That way when the time does come, they can push a flower spike through the bottom of the basket or just hanging out the bottom if you mount it and that way you're going to be able to see the bloom. So that's very important. Vanda basket or a mount. Doesn't matter about the kind, just we sell plastic, we sell wood squares, we also sell wood, wood octagons, we also sell uh, tree fern mounts, and we also sell flat mounts. So we have a lot of different variety for you. Check the description and you can check out which one works best for you. Now, now we're gonna talk about sunlight because sunlight is the next most important thing for Stanhopia orchids and that is going to be strong south-facing light with blinds or shears. You wanna be able to filter that light because they like the amount of light that they get uh, time-wise, so they're going to get the most amount of sun, but the strength of the sun is what can burn the leaves, and that's really important not to do. So by putting blinds or shears or shades, something to kind of soften that light as it's coming through the window, it's going to prevent that from burning, and that's going to be really beneficial for keeping a healthy Stanhopia orchid. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is watering. When it comes to watering your Stanhopia orchids, you want to make sure that you water pretty frequently. They like to stay well watered because of the fact that they are a more tropical orchid. They like to have the moisture near the roots, and it's going to benefit very well from that. So when in doubt, give it a little water. If you don't water it enough, you're going to notice that the pseudo bulbs are going to get a little shriveled. That is the plant's water source. So the more you water it, the better, because it's going to create nice plump pseudo bulbs. Because as much as we like to say that the pseudo bulbs is a water reserve for the plant in a case of an emergency, it doesn't really like to draw from those water reserves if it doesn't have to. That typically ends up stressing out the plant. It'll take longer for the plant to flower, and it just takes, it kind of has a bounce back period. Whereas if you keep it well watered, it's going to keep the pseudobulbs nice and plump, and it basically keeps the plant stress free, so it flowers sooner for you, which is always good. Now, the next thing is humidity. Since obviously these are tropical, they do like higher humidity environments. And a lot of times people think that they can't maintain that. If you have about 45% humidity, up to 60% humidity, they're going to do very well for you. And sometimes people in the lower end of that spectrum, in the 45% humidity range, they like to mist their plants. And we suggest that for anyone that can't give them that high humidity. Because when the plant breathes, the, the leaves do breathe, and all plant leaves will breathe, and that will end up uh, losing water through the leaves. So by misting the bottom of the leaves, it's going to help keep more water in the leaves so that you don't have to have as high of, high of humidity because that's obviously what the humidity does is it regulates how much water is leaving the plant at any given time. So there's that. Now when it comes to uh, temperature, there's a little bit of a, a, a specific temperature here that we like to do and that is cooler nights, warmer days. And it's very easy to replicate in the household setting. So don't think that you're giving it anything special. It happens naturally when the sun sets because it gets cooler at night when there's no sun. And that's basically all you have to know. If you can keep the house temperature at night about 10 degrees cooler during, uh, during the night than in the day, you're going to be fine. So about 52 to 60, de uh, to 60 degrees during the nighttime is going to be ideal. Obviously, you can, there's a little bit of nudge room, but we like to give ideal settings here. Now, the next thing is during the day. Obviously, 10 degrees warmer from uh, what you're giving them in the night. So between 
uh, 68 and 75 degrees is going to be kind of that ideal range and uh, obviously there is a little bit of bud germ in those as well. So the very last thing we're going to talk about is fertilizing and it's very crucial to give them the right fertilizer for the right stage. Here at Larry's Orchids we give them a 30-10-10 just a little bit diluted because they don't like the strength but they like the amount that they get the uh, the numbers. So 30 is great, 30 is the nitrogen, they like a lot of nitrogen when they're starting out and that's going to be in that growth phase when you're trying to get them to blooming size. Once they are blooming size, then you can switch over and a lot of growers will prefer something like a 10, 30, 20. And that's probably what we would recommend here. But um, we like to stress using what you prefer because there's so many different options for bloom boosters that sometimes people will go with a 10, 30, 10 or a 10, 30, 20, or you know, there's so many different options, but just something that offers less nitrogen and uh, basically focuses on the phosphorus, which is the middle number. So a 10, 30, 20 is what I'm going to recommend for my plants, uh, just because of the fact that they're going to really benefit from that added phosphorus. It's going to help produce vigorous blooms and it's going to bloom very well for you with that added phosphorus. So that's about all I got for you on the Stanhopia orchids. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. And if you did, as always, please click the subscribe button. That always helps us know who we're reaching and it helps you stay up to date whenever we upload a cool growing guide or a new item or uh, a blooming orchid spotlight, anything like that. You're going to get updates for that. And also, sharing is caring. So if you did enjoy this episode, please share it with your friends on any social media feed or on email or, or uh, just word of mouth is always great too because it helps us spread the word about what we're doing and it helps get our information out there, which is why we're here. And until next episode, this is Luke from Larry's Orchids thanking you for making us the number one stop shop for all your orchid and tropical needs. I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.